9am in Edinburgh and St George's School is about to become a global phenomenon. The world famous TED Talks have moved on from huge conference arenas to become TEDx, locally organised talks celebrating communication and passionate individuals who all have something interesting to say to their communities. Today, invited guest speakers, TV crews and an audience of nearly a hundred are descending on this quiet corner of Edinburgh to create an unforgettable event. So my name is Irene Oxen. I am the Head of Business, Enterprise and Management at St George's Edinburgh um, and I'm a, I'm a teacher I suppose. TEDx Youth St George's Edinburgh is the first event to take place at St George's. It is held here at our beautiful ground at the RMC. Its objective is to highlight and raise awareness to the great women of Scotland and Edinburgh. Working with TED as the parent company has been really insightful and attending webinars and training courses to meet people around the world who've hosted other TEDx events. That's been really fascinating and just phenomenal. One of the key things I really wanted in having students involved is that I think that students offer a perspective that would be enticing and appealing to themselves, to other students across the world. So St George's is not only hosting the event, but it also is providing three female speakers for the student portion of the talk. I thought it was important to have a voice for the young people who are here so they feel part of this global community of ideas and the future and the possibility of what they think could be um, available to them. I'm considering a degree in law so I think it's very fitting. My talk is about women's betrayal in the English legal system. I wanted to bring light and shed light on this topic as I don't think it's emphasised it enough um, in society. My topic is on identity and about what it feels like to grow up in a country that is basically not where you're, you're born. More specifically my identity um, and those of, similar, of a similar background to me. It's basically just exploring the different aspects of being a first generation immigrant in a country such as Scotland and how we can be sensitive towards people who have different experiences and backgrounds than us. I think I had a lot of time to rehearse and I got a lot of support from my business teacher and also Mrs Edwards, our deputy head, um, and it was a very enjoyable process. Yeah, I'd have to agree with Sarah. We had a lot of time. We were told months in advance, mm -hmm. and so we even had time to like, reformulate our entire speech if we wanted to, our entire talk, which is really good. So my talk is about the ethics of cryptocurrency, and I think that's important because not many people know about cryptocurrency, and then even less think about what its like, implications are on the world. So that's, I'm trying to like, take something that not many people know about and make it sort of relevant. I think we're hoping to achieve a couple of things. Uh, the world can be a fairly depressing place at the moment, so we're hoping to inject a bit of optimism um, for the audience. We've welcomed lots of people into um, St George's today, so we've got MPs, we've got students from other schools, and we're really hoping just to showcase what St George's is all about and how we empower our students here. For those young students, the TEDx event provides an opportunity to share the stage with experts who represent a diverse range of experience in their chosen field. Uh, I'm feeling excited, a little bit uh, nervous, but it's going to be fantastic to go on stage. Oh, well, I've seen the, the students and I was so impressed by them, you know, and it's just fantastic what they've been talking about. I really like the cryptocurrency because I haven't really put my head around it before, so it gave me that opportunity of listening into the what is cryptocurrency and, and the risks with it. I really hope to inspire them to think about running their own business. I guess I, I hope that from this talk that they can take away, I mean firstly that change is possible. If you really, really want it, like it, it, it can happen, our brains can change, which is amazing. But I also hope that it inspires people to kind of look within and I think we can spend so much time trying to fix what our lives look like on the outside and what we look like on the outside, but we forget to actually nourish 
who we are inside and I think that kind of sounds in words maybe a bit confusing but I think when you start to witness that happening truly it becomes you, you, you understand and I think that just them knowing that that is an option um, could be really powerful they might not mean obviously they're not going to be changed overnight <laughs> by listening to the talk but it could just kick start that that journey I thought that it would be an interesting way of hosting a TEDx event by having a mu musical interlude to show that women can be fantastic in, in a number of different guises and a number of different professions. We just perform it. It's never occurred to us that we happen to be female. We did particularly try and choose a, a piece by a female composer, though, because it would be easy to play something by a dead white man. And we thought, no, we definitely want to play something that's current. Um, so that was good. But I think in music, you just, we, we're performing and we're playing, and we try not to think about gender so much. To stand up for what I believe in. TEDx represents a truly global community. Iranian artist and musician Pega Meridius was delighted to find her presentation resonated with one particular student at the event. It was amazing to have someone who kind of understood in the audience and I didn't even realise that an Iranian student would be there. So, um, yeah, I guess I haven't quite processed it yet, but it was a really lovely experience to be able to connect with someone that I didn't know like that. DIY is the best antidote to my FOMO. My talk was about, it begins with um, my FOMO, fear of missing out, but fear of women and girls missing out because of menstruation, but particularly because um, of, for some women and girls, not being able to access period products. Um, are, or not being able to manage their menstruation. And that's part of a bigger um, um, stigma and shame that surrounds menstruation. My way of placating my FOMO, if you like, in terms of what I was talking about, was making, making media, telling the stories that do reflect the diversity of the world around us. My talk began by asking if it's possible to connect Mesopotamian clay cuneiform tablets, Edison's uh, early sound recordings, and Wales earwax which I hope through my talk I actually did prove it is possible to connect. So I was talking about data and I was talking about um, turning data into artwork. The question I leave you with is this. What do we want our records to say about us now? How we've lived our lives and how we've left our minds. Listening to each other's stories um, and listening to stories that from people that we would maybe have preconceptions for or we'd not usually listen to is a place of possibility and a place where things can, me to something new can tongue. be born if we were, can be, we can find but places to fully listen to each other and, and I was arguing that that place is theatre I suppose on some level but also that it's, it's anywhere where we're open to each other. International students contributed 28.8 billion pounds. It was a lovely experience, you know, it's a fantastic opportunity to be able to share my work with a non-academic audience, if you will, and to distill the research I do and to project that. I think it gives the girls a sense that they can achieve beyond their dreams and that there is a wider world. I think it means that anything is possible.